Hey everybody, Phil here at Wood Street Farm and this weekend in Central Virginia is a complete washout. So I'm working in the garage doing a few woodworking projects. I just finished up a couple of benches, the same benches that I built before. I'll put a link uh, in the description and I'll put a link above for that video if you want to take a look at those benches. Pretty straightforward plan if you're looking to build some benches for your garden or for your yard or on your patio or whatever. Uh, we're going to be using those benches around our farm in a couple different places, including around our fire pit. But today I am working on a couple bluebird boxes and the finished product is going to look like this. This is a plan I got from the North American Bluebird Society, but I'm going to end up making a couple different changes to their plan. Not a huge deal, but their plan actually leaves a whole open gap on the front of this box. I wanted the traditional look to have a hole, so uh, the biggest difference that I'm going to do is just a longer front panel and then my floor goes all the way to the bottom of, their bo of the box. In their plan, the floor was recessed a little bit. Other than that, the exact same build, same dimension, same angle, all the same deal. So uh, stick around, see how we build this, and if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more stuff that we do around our farm, make sure you subscribe as well. So here we go. The lumber that I have is cedar and cedar is naturally rot resistant, bug resistant and so on. It makes great birdhouses. It doesn't need to be painted. So that's what I've got. But cedar is really expensive. So uh, it's crazy because just over to my side here, just off camera, I've got a one by eight board that I'll use for the roof panels on these Bluebird boxes. That one eight foot length of one by eight was $30. Cedar is just crazy expensive here in Central Virginia. But uh, Lowe's did have uh, the cedar fence pickets. So I've got six foot sections of cedar. And this wood is just a little bit thinner than your standard one by stock. So it's still some nice wood. It is cedar, it's rough sawn. You can see the texture on there. Uh, but these boards were actually 10 cents cheaper per board than the standard treated pine fence boards. So I thought that was crazy. Uh, these were only like $2.60 a piece where that other board was $30 by itself. So uh, each birdhouse is only going to need one of these fence boards and a small section of that one by eight. So the total cost per bluebird box I'll calculate it up later, but it, uh, it should be pretty reasonable once we get it all done. And I think I have material to do five boxes today. So let's get to work. So those are the basic pieces. We've got two sides cut out. That's with a 10 degree angle for the roof. We have the bottom and the tray. The tray will be a removable piece to make clean out easier. And then there's the back and the front. So that'll all come together. I have to cut the roof panel still. And I also need to um, cut all of my angle cuts, which I'll show you here in a second. All right, next I'm going to tilt my blade to 10 degrees and I'm going to cut the bevel cuts for the roof line so all of the boards line up nicely. All 
All right, now I'm just gonna try this on a test piece to make sure all my angles line up the way I want them to. All right, and with this board being my test piece, I can see that my 10 degree angle lines up perfectly. You know, if we envision this as my roof board, the 10 degree angle lines up perfectly with what will be the sideboard of the box. So, uh, so my blade and my saw is good, matches up well, and now I'll be able to go ahead and cut the bevels on, um, on the rest of the boards. So it all comes together now. This is my backboard. There's a 10 degree bevel cut on the top of this. This is my front board, 10 degree bevel cut on that. And then this is my roof board. And there's a 10 degree bevel cut on that as well. So when it's installed on top of the box, this board, the roof board will line up perfectly with the backboard and they'll all be at the same angle. All right, so there's one other cut that I need to do, and that's on my, uh, I'm gonna have to do it by hand on these uh, baseboards. So there's the bottom plate of the box, and then there's the tray that'll sit inside. We're gonna round the corners off of both of these uh, so that um, that allow a little bit of airflow, and if any water gets inside, it'll also let the water to drain. So uh, I'm just gonna use my little jigsaw for that, and I'm just gonna round off these corners. All right, well, I was just laying out for a little dry fit here and I realized I missed a step. So both the uh, front board and the back board need to get cut down to four inches according to the plan. Got those here, that's uh, this one and this one. And then I also need to cut the bottom pieces to a different dimension that's what, than what's listed here because that plan assumes that you have all three quarter inch wood. And since I'm using these fence boards and they're a little bit thinner, they're only five eighths. Uh, so I need to cut these blocks just a little bit bigger uh, so that they meet up squarely on the inside of, uh, of this box. So I'll go ahead and make those adjustments and then we'll get moving. All right, so you can see I'm just doing a final dry fit here. And you can see that this piece goes here in the bottom. Okay, I've got my two sides. My roof board meets up cleanly with my sides. Everything comes together. And then the front panel will go there. And I'm just looking to make sure that I measured the uh, bottom plate correctly because this piece lines up flush with these boards. Okay, so the next thing we gotta do Let's cut a hole in this, and for that, we'll go over to the drill press. assembly here will go together with uh, I've got uh, 16 gauge galvanized nails uh, inch and a half long and some good uh, exterior wood glue here on all of the surfaces that are being joined
see what happened there. I think I'm going to go shorter. These are a little too long. So I just wanted to knock the ends of those nails down inside. I'll put a little bit of wood filler on top of that. It should be good to go. But I am going to switch to some shorter nails in the nail gun. All right, I'm going to switch to uh, the 18 gauge one inch because this wood's so soft, it's going to end up going in over a half inch anyway. And uh, once the glue sets, that'll hold it together really well. Well, my camera battery died, so I can't show you the last couple steps, but I'll just show you what I did here. Drilled a little hole down here at the bottom, and I put a simple little uh, nail in this way. That'll prevent the, the front panel from opening uh, without the nail removed. So uh, there's regular deck screws here as the pivot point for this front panel. So the front panel can open, and then that tray can remove here for uh, for clean out. It closes back down, nail goes back in. I like to drill this hole at an, at an angle so that gravity is kind of holding it down in there because over time this nail hole will loosen up. Right now it's kind of tight but uh, if it's if the hole is drilled this way gravity will hold it in place. And then the final thing here we just drilled a couple 3 8 inch uh, holes here near the roof line for a vent and that's it. That is your Bluebird box. So the last thing I'm going to do here, just to wrap up, on the inside of the front panel, I'm going to score with my grinder. And you could use a chisel or anything else that, that you could uh, just rough this up a little bit. And it's good to do that so that the um, fledglings, after they hatch and they're ready to leave, have something to cling on to to get out of here. All I'm going to do is just get the, uh, the grinder with the cutter wheel on it and I'm just gonna cut a couple slots, so that'll be pretty quick. That should work great. Give those little claws something to cling on to. All right, well thanks for watching. That's it for today, and that's how you build a Bluebird box. There's lots of different styles and plans out there, but this is a simple one. So that's it for today. If you got any questions or comments about what we did here, Go ahead and leave those below and I'll see you on the next video.